Hi, this is Wayne Zell, and welcome to Blueprint for Wealth, your fast-paced video podcast that's designed to help you realize your personal dreams of wealth and freedom. And it's broadcast and brought to you by Zell Law, our law firm located in Reston, Virginia, serving clients all across the country on tax, estate planning, business planning, and business succession planning matters. If you want to know more about us, visit us at zelllaw.com. Every week or every other week now, we're doing a, an interview with special guests who have something to say that might be of interest to our listeners. Our listeners are entrepreneurs, they're business executives, they're family businesses, people who are trying to save money all the time. And I've got a special guest for you this week. His name is Bill Lloyd. Welcome, Bill. Wayne, great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on the show. Bill's going to tell us about a really cool tax strategy that he has developed to the point of it being patented. So we're going to get into that in a second. Let me give you a little bit of background on Bill. And then I want to hear a little bit about his background beyond what I'm telling you about him. And then we'll jump into something called the charitable pay raise. Bill's been in the financial services industry for over 35 years, and he graduated from Colgate University with an undergrad degree in theoretical math. So you know he's really an egghead and very smart. And <laughs> classics, theoretical math, classics. My God, he's brilliant. And a master's from UVA. And he holds various prof professional credentials, you know, the letters that come after our names. He's got all kinds of credentials and all kinds of licenses. Today, his specialization is in providing tax advantage strategies that will help you and his clients achieve your financial goals earlier, more efficiently, and asset protection. So he is a thought leader now in tax, the tax strategy space, and he's going to tell us about the charitable pay raise. Bill, first of all, before we get into the charitable pay raise, tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming a tax strategy perfectionist <laughs> and, and designer. Thank you, Wayne. Well, I got, as you mentioned, I got into financial services about 35 years ago and quickly evolved into financial planning. And one of the common bad guys that every single client faced was called the tax code. <laughs> and if there was something that we could do to help them save a little bit of money and that common um, enemy, the tax code, we could recycle it into their personal economy and help them get where they were trying to go a little faster, a little more efficiently. And they usually smiled at me at the end of the appointment. So that was a that was a good day. You've always been focused on saving people income taxes. Absolutely. Okay. Keep income, going. capital gains, and then eventually estate taxes. All right. And um, at, over the course of my career, that, uh, that energy, that uh, focus grew and grew. And about eight years ago, I formed a second business with a local CPA. And um, that was totally, totally focused on just helping people, helping other advisors use tax strategies, elements in the code for good instead of evil. <laughs> and it was one, one of those ideas that um, it dawned on me, I could take to another level when uh, um, in tandem with a change in tax law back in, um, 2016, 2018, basically. Yeah. yeah. Under the uh, under the Tax job, Jobs and Cuts Act of 2017, Correct. which was effective in 2018. So first of all, how does theoretical math classics and, you know, your master's fit into all this? How did you get from there to being a financial planner? That's really a really interesting evolution to me. I, uh, people occasionally look at me like, what? Um <laughs> Believe it or not, um, theoretical math starts when you're in high school. That's called good old fashioned Euclidean geometry. Okay. And I always enjoyed the proofs aspect and then later learned how, how that tied into, um, physics and the creation of new and amazing things that, you know, the physics folks do. But it all starts, um, on a whiteboard, the old days of blackboard. Um, you know, the days of the beautiful mind, for instance, and, and just I had such respect and wanted to pursue and understand what it was, at least, that they were pursuing and, and taking these steps that are really 
to this day evident in everything that we do. And believe it or not, it started back in in Greece and in and in Rome. There were brilliant mathematicians and astronomers and scientists back in that era, and not so much Greek, but Latin is very, very logical. It's kind of a boom, boom, boom. So it's often like doing proofs to translate. So there is some harmony there, believe it or not. Now, in getting into grad school at UVA, and I was very involved in coaching at that time, um, actually published a thesis dealing with in sports psychology. And if you carry that forward into the business world, we're just competing on a different field. Um, people in business are doing what they can do to get ahead, trying to be the best, the sharpest, the brightest. So it's really fun to understand the motivations and motivate them and bring that to the table, along with perhaps some new ideas from the tax ide- the tax world that can help them take that competitive mindset and take it to another level. Well, you know, it's funny. My, my son is, a, is finishing up his fifth year of his PhD program, his final year in mathematics, theoretical mathematics at the University of Michigan. He's and awesome. I read, I started to read his, uh, the, the beginning of his dissertation and I got through two sentences and I did not understand anything because it was using all of these characters, which I believe these characters are Greek letters that they translate are. into certain functions in the mathematic, in the world of mathematics. So I, I have high respect for anyone who can, uh, go from that to anything. I, th- I think probably if you can do that level of mathematics, you probably can evolve and do pretty much anything financial uh, <laughs> or otherwise, uh, because it involves so much logic. So any of that, so you, you got into the financial planning world. How long have you been a financial planner overall? Um, I've had my CFP probably close to 27, 28 years. And then eight years ago was when you sort of had this revelation to create this idea known as the charitable pay raise. What is the charitable pay raise? Sure. The charitable pay raise is a combination of two disparate areas of the tax code that when in the right circumstances can help folks enjoy more of what they've earned and saved over the course of their lifetime by generating greater after-tax cash flow while at the same time supporting the charities that are meaningful to them. So it's the combination of the two that brings forth great things for both sides. It's a win-win. So I I would assume from a tax perspective, one of those uh, benefits is that they get a charitable income tax deduction for whatever it is that they're going to be contributing. Is that correct? Correct. And as they go through our method, they are going to get that large charitable tax deduction that you're mentioning. But a second benefit is that the structure produces tax-free cash flow for the rest of their life. So they're getting the benefit of both. And the large charitable tax deduction um, often gets paired with a Roth conversion at the same time. I see. So So, we're creating two different buckets of money. Okay. Both providing tax free cash flow to our clients the rest of their lives. So let me back you up a second. So one, one aspect of it is claiming a charitable income tax deduction on a donation of something to somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece of it happens to relate to converting a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and Wayne, they, that's not mandatory. It's just something okay. that we point out to their advisors and say, you know, if this makes sense, don't don't overlook the opportunity that that charitable tax deduction, for all I know, may be used for something else. But we certainly want to at least discuss the opportunity to use it for Roth, because the more that we can create tax free cash flow, the more we immunize that client from whatever tax rates we're going to be looking at down the road. And with $34 trillion of federal debt and the current proposal for the budget showing increases on wealth tax, as well as higher taxes on businesses, you know, we're starting to see that which we know is coming. So we're looking to help people protect themselves. 
I, you know, we, we know it's coming or we don't know it's coming. We don't know what's coming. We don't <laughs> know who's going to get elected and we don't know what they're going to do when they do get elected. But, th- you know, the bottom line is everyone is always inclined to save money in taxes. I've been spending my, the last 44 years of my career um, fighting the IRS and figuring out ways to minimize taxes for my clients, both income tax and estate tax. Is there an estate tax savings associated with this plan? There actually is, because from the charitable side of the fence, when they look at this structure of which they are a partner with the client, they are guaranteed annual annual revenue distributions from the structure for the life of the client and their spouse. So there's that wonderful plan, locked in plan gift kumbaya feeling from the charity side. But at the finish line, they're also going to get a legacy defining final gift. And our app, which was patented, which uses the method in every case is showing a seven and on occasion, eight figure gifts going to the charity. And that's meaningful. That's powerful. That's talking to your kids and saying, Hey, um, I want you to remember the YMCA in Boston that took care of dad. And that's where we're putting some money because that made his whole life come to reality, which is why we're here. So it's a chance to give back and every family has a story. And there's so many clients that have always thought, yeah, I want to do that. But if I do it while I'm alive, I'm afraid I won't have money for my wife if I die or vice versa. Where did this idea come from? um, (laughs) Wayne, back when I was in college at Coolgate and I'd be, In the middle of a take-home exam, I'd keep a pad of paper next to me. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd have the next step in the proof. And things just come together in your subconscious uh, because your brain is continuing to work on the problem. So I was introduced to the basic structure. There were things I liked about it, things I didn't like about it that was developed in 1999 by a uh, West Coast tax attorney. And... um, Never saw his his um, documents, but I knew the concepts and I thought about how I could rebuild it and build it better. Okay. And that's where it all came from. And then, as mentioned, when the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act came along, it dawned on me that I could take an element of that and combine it with this other structure and uh, make it better, more efficient, and um, and I think far better from a uh, IRS standpoint as well, too. What was the change in the 2017 Act that caused this to be supercharged? It had to do with net unrealized appreciation stock, which for you uh, watchers and listeners who may not be familiar, is employer stock held inside a retirement plan. Good old fashioned 401k or an ESOP or maybe something else too. And there are special laws in the code that are designed to enable those plan participants to extract their stock, which they've acquired over 20, 25, 30 years working for a company on a favored basis. The problem was that the old rules had some hurdles attached to them such that nobody really used them because it was basically punitive um, in the long run to try and use those rules. But the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act changed the code in a very favorable way so that this option is something that every single person with newer stock should at least talk about with their advisors. Excellent. Excellent. Whether they use the method or not, they should talk about it. Excellent. That's great, great uh, advice and, uh, and making sure that people are aware of this. Um, who does this help? Does it help? And, and you know, that's a, it's a multifaceted question. Does it help somebody who just wants to leave assets to their kids? Does it help somebody who doesn't want to leave assets to their kids? Does it help somebody who's left enough to their kids, but they want to help charity? Who who does this help? Who does this strategy help? All the above, actually, in different ways. Um, And here's why. Um, You do have those blessed families that are of extremely high net worth, and they're really not worried about replacing assets for kids because they're in a high estate tax situation. And this provides 
believe it or not, a vacuum that's going to suck assets out of their estate upon death and aim it towards the charities of their choice prior to the calculation of the estate tax. So okay. for that segment, it's a really powerful tool in that way. For a lot of folks that have done very well professionally that are maybe not in that ultra, ultra high level, it's going to help them maximize the tax, the after tax cash flow from their assets, whether it's employer stock or just cash or an appreciated asset. It doesn't have to be new a stock. It could be a collectible. It could be you got lucky and bought Apple stock on day one. You've got a piece of land that was in the right place at the right time, and now it's time to sell it. So it really works well with any capital appreciation asset. That was and the key, if they key point want, I wanted to emphasize. You, you yep. talk about the new uh, supercharging of the strategy, mm -hmm. but the, the fact that if you know somebody owns NVIDIA stock, which I did, but I sold too, too soon. <laughs> if somebody owns NVIDIA stock or you know, something that's appreciating wildly, and wants to utilize this strategy, that's also a good candidate for this. We used it recently for a fellow who basically was a buy and hold for 20 years, and he happened to own Apple, United Healthcare, a couple of others, and we took four of his stocks and moved them into the method and um, eliminated 99% of the capital gains tax and um, then transitioned um, those highly concentrated positions in his portfolio into a more diversified portfolio. And down the road, um, he'll turn on the spigot and turn on tax-free cash flow when he does. So Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is there any downside to this strategy? What is the downside, if any? The downside is that those assets that are used in the method will not be going to their heirs. That, that was so, what I was trying to get at. Yes. So the solution there is to, to pair it with some life insurance. And if estate taxes are an issue, we suggest they do it outside their estate. So it's a win-win. They're increasing their after-tax cash flow and they're replacing an asset for their children that won't be part of the taxable estate. So for the listeners out there, if you've been following my blog, you'll, you'll have seen uh, a blog on irrevocable life insurance trusts. And that's what Bill's referring to. It's a wealth replacement strategy. You can take some of the tax savings, invest it in an insurance policy, but do it through an irrevocable trust. When the trust receives its proceeds, the uh, proceeds are not included in your estate. They're excluded from your estate, yet they're available for use by your spouse, your kids, uh, without it being included in the estate and being subject to estate tax. What people don't remember or what people forget often is that life insurance, if you own a life insurance policy, it's included in your estate, even though it's not taxable for income tax purposes, perhaps it may be an includable asset. So this is just a, a tack on strategy on top of the charitable pay raise that, you know, again, supercharges it and replaces the wealth that's going to charity with a life insurance proceeds from a life insurance policy in an irrevocable trust is the way to do it. And Wayne, why don't you take a second just to remind them, and this is what something we talk to our clients about every single time, about what's going to happen on January 1, 2026. The world is going to end. Oh, no, no, it's not going to end. It's uh, going to change a lot of things. As, uh, as most of you know, and as I've been harping on for the last couple of years, um, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which enacted very significant tax cuts, trillions of dollars, four trillion and, and, and increasing uh, dollars of tax cuts, come to an end automatically. Many of almost all the income tax changes terminate at the end of on December 31st at midnight. Uh, the uh, carriage turns into a pumpkin and we're all you know going to have to face the consequences mm -hmm. on the estate tax side. We currently every individual currently enjoys an exemption, a lifetime exemption this year of thirteen point six one million dollars indexed for inflation. So by the end of twenty twenty five, it may be as high as fourteen million or higher. And that's twenty eight million dollars for a married couple. Well, at the end of December, at, at the end of December in twenty twenty five, at the stroke of midnight. 
the exemptions drop by 50%. So they will drop back down indexed to about $7 million per person. And that is significant. So if you've got assets that are appreciated or appreciating in value, a lot of my entrepreneur clients are growing companies right now. We're trying to figure out how to shelter some of the proceeds from the sale of their company, even after 2025. And we're setting up irrevocable trusts to accept gifts that might deplete the exemption of one of the spouses, but still leaves an exemption of the surviving or the other spouse. And that's that exemption is going to drop. So if you've used 13.61 million before December 31, 2025, the IRS is not allowed to claw back that excess over the seven million or whatever the uh, whatever the exemption is going to be at that time. So there's some planning that we're very much involved in right now for a lot of our clients. And thank you, Bill, for letting me explain that to everybody. Absolutely, and our strategy um, can be a help in uh, in the structuring of one's estate and retirement planning. Um, so it's retirement planning, it's estate planning, it's income tax uh, minimization, all the things that everybody wants to achieve now with their lives. There are ways of doing this. Now, this is a patented strategy, is it not? The patent is on the app in which the mathematics are stored. So the way okay. that our strategy is protected is in this fashion. My um, IP attorney told me there was a Supreme Court ruling roughly 10, 12 years ago, and the Supreme Court basically made it extremely hard to patent just a method. Right. But when you take your method and create an app that compares your way with the old ways and then attach it to um, the genuine uh, user interface on a um, in an app, now you've got something you can patent. And in so doing, you're protecting your math. And then you can copyright all the, as you can imagine, all the legal minutia that uh, goes into this. And that's the route we took. Yeah, it's a protected idea. And so uh, do you have um, other opinions of tax professionals that bolster this position so that somebody is comfortable utilizing this technique? We do. We have a should tax opinion from Fisher Broyles. And, and, you know, um, Fisher Broyles is a very big firm, and it, that means we've got somebody who's pretty capable and knowledgeable uh, who has analyzed this. And um, I'm not passing on the efficacy of the of the uh, technique, but if people want to know more about the technique, Bill, how would they find out about it? Where can they get more information on, on this? They can go to charitablepayraise.com if they want a kind of a techie perspective. They can simply download the white paper there that's for all to review. Um, As they get further into it, we would ask that they sign an NDA, at which point we will give them the user license as well as all the templates to implement our strategy. By then, we hope that they will have looked at some other um, information related to it to gain a further understanding, and we offer complimentary using the app to actually do a, an analysis, a dry run, if you will, to look at what might happen if they use traditional methodology and what would happen using the charitable pay raise and look at it side by side. Have you have you gotten any pushback on anything from the IRS or any of the state governmental authorities on this? No. And the beauty of our strategy is, Wayne, that we hand over the same user license, the tax opinion, and a um, uh, from the director of the IRS's office, a Ninth Circuit Court opinion that was on a prior structure from which we grew. And it really points out the things they didn't like, none of which we do. So we give all those to the client's attorney. We're, so we're not hiding behind any wall in any fashion. And we also provide an hour of counsel with our tax attorney at our cost for the client's attorney if they have technical questions that they want to be clear on. So 
how how do you guys win in this situation? How does uh, how does Bill Lloyd win uh, in this situation so that the users know that this is something that benefits you as well as them? Thank you. We charge um, a user license, and it's based on the volume of the assets that go in, and it's one time up front, Wayne, and it starts at what we feel is pretty fair, 2.5% between zero and 2 million declining to 2% from two to 4 million, one and a half percent from four to six, and then from six to 10, it's down to 1%. Now you're talking about, when you're talking about 2 million or 6 million or whatever, that's the amount of the projected tax savings, is that correct? No, that's actually the amount of capital that's going into, because the, the tax structure. savings, if we calculated that over 25 years would be astronomical. Um, no, it's just the amount going in, but, what we're also doing is we're working in tandem with the client's advisors. We're not taking assets under management. Um, sometimes we help out with the insurance to get it done right, and we have access to some tools. But we're there to complement what financial planners, investment planners are doing to help them do the most for their clients. And we also have found a lot of people um, are very philanthropic. And they see this as something that where they can kind of feel like they're doing a little more for their alma mater or their church or whatever it is that's important to them. Right. You know, it. there's something to be said for that. So how do we benefit? We are getting those fees, but our goal is to have a billion dollars utilized in the method, which would then be producing at least $10 million a year for charity out and I have this deal with God. I'll work on the method and he can work on the charities. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is a win-win for those of you that are listening. And the uh, my recommendation is if you're not a financial advisor and you're listening to this, get your financial advisor, your CPA involved and have them contact Bill and, and arrange for a meeting because I think it's compelling. Now, I'm not aware and I'm a tax lawyer. I'm not aware of any adverse authority on on this issue. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I feel confident that what Bill has constructed with his tax lawyers and his IP lawyers is really unique. And it gives an opportunity to give something back to charity. We have a lot of clients who are high net worth, ultra high net worth, and not so ultra high net worth or high net worth that would benefit from this um, and in a variety of different ways. So it depends, obviously, on your fact pattern. But I think it, it, it would benefit the listeners to get your financial advisors or if, if you're a financial advisor, CPA, insurance person, contact Bill. And again, charitablepayraise.com, correct? That's it. Bill Lloyd, thank you so much for being a special guest on Blueprint for Wealth and sharing your expertise and your <laughs> ideas. Wayne, it's been an honor to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. Join us next time for a special guest on Blueprint for Wealth. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.